life without ever having any problem from it, largely because uh, they often take a dose that's inadequate, they take a drug that's inappropriate but quite safe, or they stop taking it as soon as they feel better, which is often soon because they didn't need it anyway. But these drugs do have side effects. Some of them are mild, and they're pretty likely. Women often get a yeast infection after being on an antibiotic for a while. Allergy to antibiotics is not an uncommon thing. Diarrhea, very common as well. It upsets the microbiome in your gut, and a little bit of diarrhea can result. But more serious things are possible as well. There are reactions that aren't really allergies, but things like Stevens-Johnson syndrome, where your entire skin sloughs off like you've been burned, can be caused by a lot of antibiotics, folks. And I had the tragedy of seeing a kid who got Stevens-Johnson syndrome, most likely from the Bactrim that he got, unnecessarily for a cold. So let's talk about the second issue, and that was back pain and back specialists and back surgery. Back pain is one of the most common conditions among adults in the United States, and it's one of the ones that is most commonly overtreated inappropriately. First of all, it's so common, and yet we do not understand all the mechanisms of back pain, not even close. We have a very crude understanding where we take MRI pictures and CT scan pictures of people's backs and we detect some visual anomaly in their anatomy and we conclude that's the reason for their back pain. And if we went in there and shaved that off like a drawer that's sticking in our cabinet, everything will run smoothly and things will be cool. But this isn't true at all because when radiologists look at MRI scans and identify disc disease, There's a good portion of the time, if they're not told which side of the body the pain is on, they identify something on the wrong side of the body. You have to lead that horse to water in order to get him to drink from the side that he's supposed to. The other thing is if you just CT scan or MRI scan everybody's back, there's a bunch of people that have abnormalities that could be corrected with surgery. But these are people who have no back pain. And there are other people with severe back pain and you can't find much on their MRI scan. Most back pain goes away within about six weeks. And most folks today would say that bed rest, not a good idea. Traction, not a good idea. Chiropractic, maybe harmless, maybe harmful. I'm not sure that many people would recommend it. It's mainly pain control and trying to maintain some level of activity so that all the muscles in your back don't kind of go to sleep and atrophy while you're resting up your back. To prevent back pain, or even in back pain that isn't too serious in its active throes, perhaps the only thing that has really been shown to be effective are exercises. And we're not talking about deadlifting or running marathons. We're talking about some stretching exercises. And there are a lot of books out there that you can get that outline the low back pain book, that sort of thing, about the kind of stretches that you can do. But people don't like stretches. First of all, they get opiates, which may be great. I've gotten them for severe back pain. They ought to give the Nobel Prize to the folks who've invented this stuff. Some people do become addicted, especially since back pain tends to extend for a while and it tends to recur if you're not doing any sort of exercises and you've had severe back pain in the past. It'll go away on its own within about six weeks in the vast majority of people. If you treat it with any of those things I talked about, physical therapy, exercise, bed rest, traction, chiropractic, acupuncture, it'll go away in about six weeks for most people really hasn't been shown for the vast majority of people who have back pain that any of those therapies speed recovery. It just kind of gets better on its own when it does. How about folks that say, well, I want to see a back specialist. Who are back specialists? There are two kinds of people. They're neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons. Notice the term surgery in what I'm saying. They operate. They operate on backs, and that's what they do. And if you go to see a back surgeon, there's a good chance he'll completely image your back, find something that needs surgery, and go in and operate. Great. Your problem's over, right? No. One of the biggest causes of lawsuits in this country is what's called failed back syndrome. People who've had back surgery, sometimes repeatedly, with failure to relieve their symptoms, as well as the appearance of new symptoms that worsen their original back pain. Finally, let me talk about ER usage. People complain about, oh, I had the flu, I had such a long, I had the stomach flu, I had such a long wait, I had a urinary tract, and 
Don't go to the emergency room for any of those things, folks. There's nothing they're going to do for the stomach flu. There's nothing they're going to do for influenza. Yeah, maybe they'll give you some antiviral therapy that will shorten your symptoms by a day and a half. You're better off staying home and not waiting in the emergency room for a day and a half to get the medicine. Stomach flu, unless you're dehydrated, don't need to go. Urinary tract infection, drink a lot of fluids, drink your cranberry juice, get into your primary care doctor soon. It's not a middle-of-the-night kind of thing, folks, because even when you get antibiotics, you're still going to be hurting for a little while. Those are not emergencies. And to go to the emergency room for those things, just nuts. That's where somebody's going to do something wrong. They're going to do a test, and they're going to find something wrong with you that isn't really wrong, and you're going to be sunk then going into the medical quagmire, or you're going to catch something from another patient who's got a contagious disease in there who shouldn't be there either. They got norovirus or something, and they're going to give it to you. Plus, it's going to cost you money. Plus, it's going to be miserable. If I'm puking and have diarrhea, man, I'd be much better off talking on the big white telephone at home than struggling with a emesis basin on a metal folding chair outside the emergency room during peak hours. So what don't we complain about that we don't get enough on? I'm going to talk about colonoscopy first because half of Americans don't get it. It's a disease that can be screened for effectively. My father died. It's a miserable way to die. I've already had colonoscopy. I'm grumpy enough. This is maybe one of the reasons three times, and I'm scheduled for my fourth in a couple of weeks. Yet people don't get it. Why don't they get it? Well, it's not a pleasant thought, first of all. Although they generally give you some stuff IV when you go in there and you just feel happy and you don't remember anything about it. The big problem for somebody that's really had it is the prep. That's just miserable. They give you a laxative and you've got to clean out your colon the night before. I find it so interesting that some people opt for virtual colonoscopy. You still need the same prep. And if they find something on virtual colonoscopy, guess what they've got to do? they got to do regular colonoscopy. Guess what's got to happen? Another prep. So the prep is the miserable thing. And people will give themselves these excuses. I don't have any family history. My diet, I, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I don't have any symptoms. People without any history of colon cancer die of it every year. They die of it when it could have been caught at a preventable stage. There's very few people outside maybe the Seventh-day Adventist community in this country who have a diet that is so rigidly healthy that they really don't have to worry at all about colon cancer. And finally, by the time you develop symptoms from colon cancer, you are dead man walking. And yet half of the people don't get colonoscopy that could prevent this awful way of dying. Immunizations. Not even going to get into the vaccine and anti-vaxxer thing about childhood immunizations. Look at adult immunizations. We don't get our annual flu shot. We don't get the other things that would keep us out of the hospital. And finally, I'm going to talk about diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, prevalent condition in this country. People are being told to diet and exercise. They don't. People are told to lose weight. They don't. People are given oral medicines that they gradually trickle up in intensity. And by the time people are put on insulin for their type 2 diabetes, they have often been sick with their diabetes for so many years that they're already half blind, ready to get an amputation or go on dialysis. And there's a lot of people then that mistakenly Blame the insulin for that. Grandma was fine with her diabetes. They put her on insulin. She went blind, lost her leg, and her kidneys failed. That's not true. All of those things happened because her diabetes caused them to happen, and she wasn't put on insulin early enough. From the moment you develop diabetes, every protein in your body is being sugar-coated like a set of frosted flakes, and those proteins don't work well anymore. They don't work well in the back of your eye. They don't work well in the blood vessels in your brain or heart or kidney. They don't work well at all. Getting diabetes is an emergency. You've got to get the sugar down before it starts irreversibly damaging your body. Doctors, I think, have a stupid model when it comes to treating diabetes. They tell people to diet and exercise, knowing full well most won't. They start people on medicines knowing that won't control the diabetes in most, and they reserve the insulin as punishment for the people who don't diet, exercise, or control their diabetes with oral medicines. Man, you get diabetes, I'd want to be on insulin as soon as I could, get that blood sugar down, then see if I can diet, exercise, control it with oral medicines only. Medicine is not an easy profession, folks. A Google search, a 30-second ad to ask your doctor whether a medicine is right for you, is not the educational equivalent of an MD degree, board, or subspecialty certification. 
Nevertheless, you can equip yourself with information and facts like maybe some of those that I shared today. Don't ask for antibiotics if your doctor thinks they aren't necessary, and don't pressure him to prescribe them. Don't go looking to go to a back surgeon when you've had back pain for four or five days. Don't run to the emergency room when you have vomiting, flu, or a cold unless something else is going on. Get your immunizations. If you have diabetes, get that blood sugar down. Consider it a life-threatening emergency. And folks, get your colonoscopy. If you're a grumpy old guy like me, get your colonoscopy, folks. It's really important. Until next time, stay healthy, my friends. Sure and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and more details at grumpyolddoc.com.